I think part of it is that it, it's where it's where it was located, which is uh, you know downtown San Francisco. Um, and while I, I think San Francisco is a beautiful city, and and we should really fight hard to um, kind of right the ship of San Francisco. If you've walked around downtown San Francisco, right near the X FK Twitter headquarters, it's a zombie apocalypse. I mean, it's rough. Have you have you been been in that area? Not lately. No, yeah. I've heard. It's crazy. I've heard it's crazy. I've heard you you really can't believe it until you actually go there. You can't believe it until you go there. Well, that's not good, is it? You have the world's richest man basically saying that San Francisco is a damn zombie apocalypse. You got to be careful when you're down there. You better have a machete, an AR, body armor, a ballistic helmet, and an RPG because that's how deadly it is in the streets. Before we dive into this video, don't forget to like, subscribe. You got to be subscribed for great content like this and share so we can get it out there. So Elon Musk is on the Joe Rogan podcast, and this is just a great overall listen you guys should definitely listen to this entire podcast because they get into everything they're shooting arrows at the cyber truck just a great video they're getting like anchovy and pineapple pizza so it's a overall a really great interview but he's ba rogan basically asked elon like so what made you go with the final decision to purchase Twitter? And he goes into this, and it's, he's going to explain a little bit more. But the way he talks about it is he was saying the whole the whole outlook, the whole vision for the city, the way San Francisco was going. And you don't hear Gavin Newsom complaining about this. Or what about London Breed, right? Isn't she the mayor, the same person that wanted to defund the police and let's put it into black communities and all this other stuff, right? They're just like the way they're doing in Detroit, Atlanta, Baltimore, those places, right? But they want to put all this money into the black communities now that everything's going to hell, people are shooting up and all that in front of Twitter headquarters and all that. There's tents everywhere. It looks like so it looks like it's just a camping ground. Now we want to supply the police again. The degree to which, and, and by, by the way, Jack didn't really know know this, but the degree to which Twitter was simply um, an arm of the government was not well understood by the public. And uh, it it was there was no it was whatever the official government. I mean, it was like Pravda, basically. Um, you know, it's a state publication is the way to think of old Twitter. It's a state publication. Another arm of the government, another wing of the government. They were controlling everything. Everything that they didn't like to hear, they were completely censoring. Things that they wanted to boost up, they put in the limelight. So it's 100% false reality, false narrative. Why would the government want to do that? Why would the government want to mislead people? And people choose to believe these individuals that they see on TV or they watch in the news media or the late night show talk host all these people. This is the same thing. They want to control the narrative. That's why certain stories like the laptop, all this stuff was uh, suppressed. They're going to tell you this is true when it's not. That's what they want to control public perception and all that. Remind you, that was right around the COVID days and all that stuff. So any information that somebody's speaking out about this or somebody doesn't agree with this, it could be a well-renowned scientist, Nobel Prize winner. It didn't matter. If it wasn't to the narrative that they wanted, that the government was pushing, they were censored, banned, just completely just suspended. They don't want nothing to do with them. And that's what he was explaining. And that's why he felt he needed to do something about it. At the end of the day, the $44 billion, I believe it's only worth, like they said, like $19 billion or a little bit less now. I forgot what the figure was. But he took that. Even his old, He can never spend all the money that he has anyways, not even uh, three lifetimes. But he felt it was necessary necessary to take that money to fix this broken system and it's never going to be perfect nothing in life is but he was talking about it's so far left to the far that you can't go any far west it's all the way over that even him wanting to bring it more towards the middle they thought that that's extreme because their views are so crazy from what reality really is that even inching it more towards the middle like let's just call a ball a ball and a strike 
like a strike. They think that that's crazy. And that's what you see in San Francisco or places like Portland and all that Seattle. They're so far driven towards one angle that they refuse to listen to anything else. And that was a platform that was controlling a lot of this speech, a lot of this outreach, the messaging that people were allowed to see or allowed to put out there. And he felt that. So it's just, I think he did an amazing job just initially getting it from these people. A lot of people aren't going to agree with everything that he says, or he still has Alex Jones banned. I feel that that's somebody who should definitely be on the platform if it's a free speech platform, but maybe he's getting heat from the advertisers. If you put them on, we're done. So you got to remember that he's still trying to run a business, even though it's getting completely diluted. That's what they want too. And you're noticing they're starting to attack him more and more, but it was just great to listen to this interview for him to explain that even Jack, somebody that was there initially, didn't know how corrupt everything really was at this place. So it's, he did a great thing. And he's just talking about that. He saw it being used as like, almost like just a, a weapon, like a nuclear weapon, but so far as speech goes and the way that they were wielding this to completely change narratives. I don't think people really remember everything that was going on and what was allowed to be said. Remember, you're in the United States of America. This isn't Venezuela. This isn't Beijing, Singapore. You're in the United States of America and they were suppressing anything that they didn't want to hear. And then they were using celebrities to double down and shun these people that were putting out this mess. It was just a full out scumbag, just ruthless government wing campaign to just dilute voices and control speech. Aye, and we would have succeeded if it hadn't been for these meddling laddies and lasses. So kudos to Elon Musk, whether you like him or not, and he may lose like 60% of the value of this company that he put forth, but I guess money can buy one thing. It can buy like the salvation of humanity as far as social media goes. So at least he did a great thing with that because anything ran by the government, the state, say like the courthouses, the DMV, the VA hospital, people that know that deal with the state or the government with anything, anything they're fully in control of is an absolute dumpster fire. So him taking it out of their control and just making it where everybody can voice their opinion, except for Alex Jones, which I have a problem with, and so many others, you know, because you should be able to allow speech for everybody, whether you like it or not. There's no such thing as the hateful speech. No, just because you don't like it doesn't mean that it has to be canceled. It's just something that you don't have to listen to. It's very simple. Not everybody's going to say something you like. So you guys tell me what you guys feel about this whole situation. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and please share so we can get it out there. And I will catch you guys on the next one.